Hey guys, Mike here. So, oh boy, what a day in the market and nothing like a 3% day on the Qs to cure a little something, something. But hey, we got our move on NQ like we talked about yesterday. We'll go into that. There was another catalyst that just sparked the flames, which we also talked about yesterday. So we got on both and that is what happens. Of course, there's really something underneath that we never talk about, but we do on this channel now. And so we'll talk about what really, truly is causing this where the market is trying to figure out what it wants to do and attempting to try to recover and move back up and stuff for sure so we'll go into all of that uh and, and appreciate all you guys who are watching the videos and also your feedback as well i really do appreciate it i've been reading the comments and stuff uh, if i hadn't commented back to you i've just been super super busy and stuff um but one thing if you allow me to I, I can't stand laziness like it drives me nuts it just drives me nuts okay so i'm going to show you something and then show you the truth okay behind it because it don't it don't take long to do this but i like to present the data and let you decide for yourself on this channel but when you look at this right here this is what's going on all over twitter you know it's been uh, it's been going on for months but especially like last night on why, why it was this was trending and it's like oh because we're getting ready to come up for a fed like rate cut right and i was oh look at this and the fed pivots massive drops and yes they're right right but it, and yes of course they're right but when you look at this in more detail especially this one the 2019 one give me a break Minus 35%. Yeah, when we shut down the world. Now, let me show you something here. And that's why I say laziness. All you got to do is pull this up on a chart. Okay, this that's the Fed funds rate right there. That's the S&P. This right here is 2019, what they're talking about when the Fed pivoted. Does that look like a major drop to you? That's 217 days. We went up 15% after they cut. Multiple times, by the way. Okay, we just happened to shut down the world. That's why it dropped off a cliff. You go back to 2008, right? Yeah, we take a quick little blip down, right? And then go back up. Okay, so it ends up overall 5% over almost three months, actually over three months. All right, so it ends up like, yeah, you can see a blip down, but it don't mean the, the market can't go up if that's what it wants to happen. I think it has to do with when they cut rates, what's going on at that time and all that stuff. So just to put that out there, okay? And again, why do we bring this up? Because look, right now, everybody, that's why we know we got a rate cut coming. All the central banks are cutting. Look at this. We've had 35 cuts from the central banks around the world so far. We're just going to be the last ones to do it, which is fine. Okay, that's just fine. But you know it's coming in September, November, which, whatever date it is. It's coming this year. Okay, there's no doubt in my mind about that. I think you know the same thing. And so that's why we bring it up. And so hopefully that makes sense. Again, it's like when people tell you they just do the lazy thing go, Whenever somebody, uh, they do a stock split, it's going to drop immediately. It just drops. It's like, no, it does not. I showed a member's video. I think I even showed it to you guys. But if you remember, you definitely saw it where it's like, no, it depends on what the market is doing. Is it going to drop? Yes. Eventually, it's, gonna, yeah, it's definitely going to drop. But if the market is, is going up, all those stock split stocks go up too. All right. If the market is dropping, you do not want to do a stock split because, woo, see you later. Okay. But eventually, yes, those stocks do drop. But when people talk about it, it's like it just... Yep, so they do the stock split next day. See you later, 10%. No, that's not true. And you can put up on the charts, man. Okay, so don't believe that kind of stuff. Don't believe that kind of hype. Now, what did we talk about yesterday? Okay, let's go into what we talked about with NQ, the future, what we thought was going to happen. Okay, and then what actually happened. But if you get a drop below that line, not good. And as I'm literally recording this, we're dropping below that line. And so if that happens, which is happening as I'm speaking, look right here. Okay, that shaded area, anywhere from 17,700 to 17,845 is somewhere in there for a liquidity grab to happen. That's where the liquidity is sitting right now. That's where you can see it come down to. All right, that would be another 1.5% total at the top, maybe 1%. Like I said, as I'm recording this, we already broke that line and it's heading down there right now. Uh, futures actually closed, open back up at six. And so that is something to pay attention to uh, to see if we get the bounce overnight from that location. And of course, obviously, that's what we got. We came down here, boom, ends up hitting this little shaded area. Got a nice move up from that overnight. But again, that wasn't the big catalyst. We needed that to happen. That was the liquidity draw, boom. So we drew that right there. But then at 8.30, here comes the gasoline on the fire. Those unemployment claims came in less than expected. Oh my goodness, I don't believe it. Oh, again. Do we believe the data? Of course not. I mean, it's the, the, the data is so cooked that it ain't even funny. All right, I can tell you a million ways on Sunday how it's cooked, but that don't matter. It's about how the market reacts. That's all we want to care about. Okay, that's all we want to care about. So, of course, this comes out, but you can see our unemployment claims going up. Yes, but I think I did a member's video on this saying, look, 
three hundred to three hundred fifty thousand. What you want to start looking for? When you start getting up to that number, then we're talking. Okay, we're not there yet. But is it going up? Yes. And what's holding this up more than anything else? The numbers down really is government health care. Government is like the number one hire. They are spending our tax dollars like crazy, hiring people we do not need. Okay, and so that's holding that whole thing up. Now we're going to NQ the futures here. I don't know what's going to happen overnight. Obviously, I have a crystal ball. What I'd like to see happen right here on a four-hour chart is the inverse fair value gap right there. I'd love to see it come down, hold that level, right, and then start to move up, preferably uh, it, when actually the market opens. But again, because the one thing we don't have is news. I thought I thought the market was closed tomorrow because literally I hadn't seen a Friday with no news in so long. But this is what I'd like to see. That don't mean it ain't going to happen. They could pump this thing. Uh, 10 away from Sunday overnight. You know how they do it. Because once we get past that level that we're at, right, we close that today, I think that right there is going to go pretty fast, man. I think it is. There's a couple of reasons. One is there's a ton of liquidity sitting there. It's fine. But also, if you go to queues, right, that's a gap. And we know what happens when we get in gaps, right? It, this thing moves fast through gaps, okay? There's no resistance there. And again, the queues ain't nothing but gaps at this point in time because of this move down and stuff. But, you know, looking at the moving averages, again, what we look for, we look for rejections. And then we look for successes, right? As we move up, we haven't got to the 100 yet. So that's going to be the next test for the cues right here. How does it get to the 100? Has to fill that gap. Has to fill that first. So you could see it shoot through the gap, smack the 100, and get smacked right back down, okay? That could absolutely happen. To get to the 50, you're talking like 5.5% just to even get up there. Again, these are moving averages, so they will move. Uh, not that much, though. Uh, so just keep that in mind. But again, we come over here, you sit there, and you look at the... Uh, Short-term time frame is what we talk about. We're just building out structure, right? Uh, higher lows, higher highs, okay? What do we not do today? For a second, we came above there, but we didn't really close there as far as I saw. And so, again, after hours, it'd be different. We'll see where we open up tomorrow. So we'll see if we open up with a gap into a gap, right? That could happen. So just kind of keep that in mind. If, that, if they want to continue to do this, the market's trying to figure out what it's doing, right? It really is. So this isn't a reversal. We're trying to see it's trying to build out a reversal, of course. Look at SPY, same thing, build market structure. What do we do though? We closed above the 100. We were able to push above this 100 with this candle right here. We don't have a full body candle above it, but it's the first time it actually closed above it in the last four days. So, hey, you know, that's a victory. Didn't get rejected. And, and these things matter because I was showing people all day how we were getting, see how we were getting rejected, came above, got rejected again, sold down, came up, just kept tap, 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 and finally broke through tested it and again this is like a 15 minute time frame but and then bounce from there so again achieved 100 right so check a box off okay got above the 100 see if we can hold that one it's already filled that gap to the left it has another gap above right right about the same level as the q's and then the 50 is right there okay so there's the 50 moving average up there above that gap and so again we'll, we'll see how they're going to push this official on a friday with no kind of news going on that kind of stuff. And so, you know, a lot of traders are active on Friday. They don't want to hold over the weekend. So, you know, I don't, I'm not sure if it's going to be super volatile tomorrow, but we'll have to see. And again, you know, looking at the spy here, what would I like to see happen? You know, pre-market, whatever it is right there. Come down into here, just grab some quitty and then start to move up right there. All right, get back above the hunter, retest, and then have a slingshot move uh, going through Friday. And then next week, if you're a bull, that's what you'd like to see too. Just knock it out, be done with it. And you can see it. I mean, obviously, look, where's the red? All right, where's the red? And what's down at the bottom? All the defensive stuff, right? All the defensive stuff is red. You can't see it, but I believe it's utilities are beneath XLP right there. And so, again, that's what's at the lowest. And then the stuff that was getting destroyed sitting at the top, the big boys, right? And so you know, no surprise there. And when we look at this, you know, we're going to pull out here. What's really causing it? Again, we talked about this. Nobody was going to talk about this. I will. It may be boring, but I'm going to talk about it. it. Is like I was telling, you know, the members here, look, bonds are starting to get their right mind again, okay? You got the volatility in the bond market kind of starting to try to roll over right there. You got the spreads coming back down. So people are like, okay, okay, maybe the carry trade stuff's over. Who knows? We don't know. That's the thing you can't predict, right? But it's not a secret the VIX is coming down. Why is the VIX coming down? Because the bond market is settling down some. That's why. But you need it below 20. Look how long we were below 20 before, right? And we had some really good runs, right? So see when it spiked up over here? That was that sell-off in 2023 after right July hit, and we went down in September, October. Or actually, it was July, September, October. And so, again, you don't want it above 20. You want it below 20, all right? For the, So some, you know, basically moves that can be held. Now, HYG, look at that recovery. Almost back, 
to where it was. Okay, so <laughs> seems like a long time ago. Again, this is a four-hour chart, but I remember what was it was three or four days ago saying, "Okay, let's see what's going on here." And again, you don't know if it's a sucker's rally or whatever, a dead cat bounce, this kind of stuff, or we're going to continue to move up. That's why you have to just check boxes as we go. So, okay, that's a victory. This made it over that. This made it over that. Look at socks closed above a 200. Right, that's checking a box. That trend line might be a beast to get through. Right. What is it coming into? Coming into a gap right here. So it could move up that trend line, could see a rejection, right? Coming into the weekend and setting us up for next week. Okay. Again, NVIDIA, in order for SOX or SMH to move up, that's what's going to happen, happen here. It's got to get above that trend line. Okay. It's got to get above that 100 moving average. All right. We close right at it today. And so, you know, we're going to see what happens. And I mean, you can see, I mean, it ain't been below the 100 in quite a while. And that trend line goes back to the beginning of the year. So, and it's held up pretty dang well. So again, we'll, we'll see uh, if we're going to break above that or not. It used to be that inverse head and shoulder. That thing got blown out the, the wind as soon as we broke down to 90. So, you know, inverse head and shoulders, I don't see it anymore. Some people, oh, it's still there. I don't I don't know what the hell they're talking about. Uh, when I look at that, I don't, I don't see it. But let me know if you see it in there. I think the thing got blown out. But, you know, another thing is everybody asked me, Where, where's Tom Lee? Where's Tom Lee? And I kept looking for him, you know, and, and he did one three days ago. I hadn't seen one since. But here's a quick snippet of, you know, what what he thinks is going on and remember this dude's a perma bull okay so he, he sounds cautious it's like hmm kind of gives you a pause for a second i mean to me it's it's a very important week because we know you, it's hard to catch a falling knife as you're pointing out support levels are being broken but mortgage rates are falling the consumer's in pretty good shape and you know the, the job market i think it's very unlikely but so if the knife is stopped. falling and you want you're you like catching falling knives i know you so the question is, at what point do you catch the said knife? I, I spent a lot of time talking to Mark Newton, our technical strategist, over the weekend. And I think that there is a reprieve coming this week. Like, who knows? It could even be today, right? We could open down huge, and then after 11 a.m., we could reverse higher. But I kind of agree with Joe that this is still August, and I think that market's traction really doesn't come back till October. So between now and... October, it's maybe a range-bound market yeah. at best, but there'll still be opportunities. And it's, we could call it BitVidia, basically. I mean, it's just, there might as well be, in, I mean, Bitcoin, what is Bitcoin? Gold's hitting new highs, Bitcoin, you know, yields, people look for safety. They buy treasuries, they buy gold. People don't buy Bitcoin for safety. Yeah, big, Bitcoin is still mostly a risk on asset. And, you know, there's potentially been some li met lots of liquidations i think several hundred thousand accounts liquidated over the weekend and so let me know if you agree and everything but now when it comes to earnings all you're gonna have is canopy growth i'll even put nickel in there even though i don't understand how that company's still in business like i said no econ news whatsoever i can't even remember if you know the last friday we didn't have a bunch of news coming out it was gonna like cause all kinds of volatility but you know and let me know what you, uh, you think about what tom lee said and stuff because it's gonna be weird because now we sold down so much at the beginning or end of July, beginning of August, you know, which normally is something you would see in September. You know, does that mean like if we continue to move up, we're still going to sell down in September? Or is that kind of already been front run? You know, that's that's what causes us this weird dynamic of uh, what you're seeing right now. And, and he goes on, I saw in another clip where he was saying that, you know, when yields or sorry, when rates get dropped, it's going to obviously inject growth in the economy. Now, the funny thing is, Remember, this is the first time we've had a real estate market like this. And, and the real estate, actually, the um, mortgage rates are already dropping quite a bit, actually. And so they'll drop even more if they cut rates. And so all of a sudden, you would think that would be stimulated, right? Assuming everybody ain't losing their job and the job market still holds up, you would think that, okay? And somebody asked me, like, how does, how does immigration affect the unemployment rate, even a legal immigrant or whatever it is? And I'm like, well, if... I don't care if they're illegal or illegal, whatever it is, but they come in here, I'll say it is an illegal immigrant, and they come in here and they go get a job flipping burgers. We know they're illegal, but again, companies aren't held accountable for that kind of stuff. Well, guess what? That's that's somebody who's a citizen <laughs> that didn't get that job, right? But the but the but in a way, the illegal immigrants aren't so much counted, so to speak, and so that's how it affects the unemployment rate. And by the way, the way they calculate the unemployment rate, I've done a video of this three years ago, is insane okay i mean if they actually still call people still take surveys and if they call you and you're like saying hey if you if you've been looking for a job and you haven't shown any effort to look for a job in the last four weeks so let's just say man i've been looking for a job every day and I, i'm just done for a while because there's nothing out there in my sector i'm just done and you haven't showed an effort in looking four weeks 
not only are you not unemployed, you're not even part of the labor force anymore. That's that's how they consider it, right? And so that's how, if you wonder how the unemployment rate was dropping off a cliff when there was still so many places shut down, because they just didn't consider a bunch of people part of the labor force anymore. There was no jobs to be had, right? And like, cool, you know? And so it's, it's crazy. I, I literally read through before I came on this video, like surveys and what questions they ask you to make sure that's still how it works. That's still how it works, you know? So anyway, just want to put that out there to you. So please put your question in the comments for Saturday's video. We'll do Sunday to set up the week, of course. I appreciate all you guys who watch. Please hit that like and subscribe button. If you like private videos, more detailed videos, please join the membership, less than McDonald's combo, plus you get Discord and a very detailed morning news brief. Can't fit much more thing, uh, much more stuff in that morning news brief for you. So anyway, have a good one, guys. See you later.